Our culinary past is filled with bizarre and fascinating dishes that have long been forgotten. From savory pies filled with unexpected meats to desserts made with unlikely ingredients, the history of food is a journey through the weird and wonderful. If these meals were around today, they'd probably stir up some serious debate about what we consider to be normal. Number 1. We are about to drop the wildest meal from the past that you've probably never heard of. But where does it come from? Let's travel back to old school America, where the menu was a lot different than today. Back in the 1700s and 1800s, people living in the countryside had to be quite resourceful. So, imagine living out in the countryside back then. You've got trees everywhere, lots of nature, and animals running around. Food came from what was available. They saw something moving in the trees, and boom! It wasn't just a part of the scenery anymore. It was dinner. This wasn't your usual steak or chicken deal. No, this was something much more, let's say, unique. They turned it into a pie, but not sweet, not with fruit. This pie was savory, filled with a kind of meat you'd never expect. It was a hit in rural spots, especially because this ingredient was everywhere. What on earth could it be? Well, it wasn't any regular farm animal. This meat was recommended by cookbooks as a tasty switch up from the norm. Those cooks back then knew how to make do and whip up something delicious out of what sounded pretty bizarre to us. We're talking about squirrel pie. That's right, squirrels! Those little critters with bushy tails were the main ingredient of this weird dish. Squirrels were abundant in rural areas. They served as a readily available source of protein. This was especially important in times and places where conventional meats like beef, pork, or chicken were scarce or expensive. I hope you're not watching it, Dale. If you thought squirrel pie was weird, wait until you hear about our next dish. Number 2. This next dish is going to throw you for a loop, and we promise you won't see it coming. Imagine whipping up a dessert that's delicious, moist, and full of spices. Sounds pretty standard. But this isn't your grandma's secret cake recipe. It's something way more out there. So, how did it come to be? Back in the day, when the grocery store shelves were a bit empty and people had to get creative with what they had, a certain dessert emerged. This wasn't born out of luxury, but necessity. And yet, it became a beloved treat, passed down through generations. Surprisingly, the secret ingredient was not something sweet or even typical for desserts. In fact, it's something you'd more likely pour over pasta or sip from a mug on a cold day. This cake, believe it or not, doesn't taste anything like its mystery component. Instead, it's a burst of warm spices like cinnamon and nutmeg, creating a flavor that's both surprising and comforting. And the texture? Oh, it's incredibly moist. You'd never guess what's in it unless someone told you. This is none other than the tomato soup cake, also affectionately known as the mystery cake. Popularized during the Great Depression and World War II, when milk and eggs were luxury items, this cake used canned tomato soup to create something truly special. Who knew tomato soup could be the secret to a fantastic cake? Just when you've wrapped your mind around the idea of tomato soup cake, prepare to steep yourself in a tale where the villain is none other than coffee. Number 3. Let's take a trip back in time to when your go-to morning coffee was seen as more of a troublemaker than a trusty sidekick. Yep, there was a time when coffee was the villain blamed for all kinds of health issues. But then, along comes a hero in our story, a new drink that offers all the cozy vibes of coffee minus the worry. Back in the late 1800s, when all sorts of neat inventions were popping up, there came along a drink that was about to shake things up big time. But what's it made of? Roasted grains. It was primarily made from wheat bran, wheat, and molasses. It gained popularity for its healthful appeal, especially among those seeking a coffee substitute due to caffeine sensitivity or dietary restrictions. It was created in 1895 by C.W. Post. He was an American innovator. Did you know what he was so famous for? It was him who created breakfast cereal. What was the name of that game-changing drink? Postum. It was a staple in many households back then. But how about stepping into a time machine for a taste? Gear up, because we're whisking you back to an era where food was not just sustenance, but an art form. Number 4. We are journeying back to the culinary traditions of ancient Rome, where they had a knack for creating flavors that were ahead of their time. And this one? It's about as unique as it gets. 
Imagine a condiment so packed with flavor it could turn any ordinary meal into a feast fit for an emperor. We're not talking about ketchup or mustard here. No, it was the secret sauce behind countless Roman dishes. Now, before you get too excited, let's talk about what went into this dish. The Romans went all out. They used the entire fish. Yes, including the parts we usually throw away today, like intestines and blood. Mixed with a generous amount of salt, this blend was then left to bask in the sunlight. But not just for a day or two, but months of fermentation. And what is the name of this ancient flavor bomb? Garum. Yes, that sounds like one disgusting sauce. Garum was simply a fermented fish sauce. They served it as a culinary staple in ancient Rome. It was similar to modern soy sauce, which is famous for its umami-rich flavor profile. But when you get used to the idea of sauce made from fish guts, get ready for something even more out there. Number 5. This one is a culinary adventure that will blow your mind. We're exploring a dish that's as mysterious as it is ancient, served up in parts of Europe and Asia for centuries. It's something that combines danger, tradition, and a bit of culinary bravery. So, what's on the menu? A soup that stirred up controversy and fascination. It's made from an ingredient that could easily headline a horror movie. But before you jump to conclusions, let me walk you through the wonders of this dish. The process of making this soup is really meticulous, and it's not just about the thrill. This soup packs a punch of health benefits and is believed to warm the body and boost blood circulation. But what is this mysterious dish that combines history, health, and a hint of hazard in every spoonful? It's none other than viper soup. Those snakes with venomous bites. They've got these super long fangs they use to inject venom into their prey, like mice and other small animals. So what's so meticulous about making this soup? Preparing it, the cook must ensure the venom does not contaminate the broth. Now, do you trust the cook? This dish is pretty risky, right? If this wasn't shocking enough, get ready for another taste that has something to do with a compulsive disorder. Number 6. Imagine a time when the craze wasn't about how spicy your food could be or whether your dessert could be made vegan. Back in the 1940s, it seemed like everyone was asking, can we jelly that? And not just fruits or candies. We're talking about dinner, main course, the kind of meal you'd sit down to with your family. They took something totally normal, something you've probably eaten a bunch of times, and thought, let's see how this goes with gelatin. And you know what? It became a hit. A dish that might make you do a double take today, but back then, it was the talk of the town. People actually loved it. Now, you might be wondering, what dish could possibly withstand being jellied and still be popular? Well, hold on to your hats, because it's jellied chicken. That's right, chicken but not as you know it. It was encased in a savory jelly served up cold and sliced like a dessert but tasted like dinner. Would you like some? If you found this journey into the past as fascinating as we did, you'll definitely enjoy this video.